Okay, lecture number two. In this lecture, we're going to try and answer the question, uh, is low probability a good mark of the maker? Okay, so the, basically the aim of this lecture is to give you the tools you need to understand and appreciate the points that Dembski's making in chapter number one of his book, The Design Inference. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, there's a general uh, feeling in Christianity and, and in, in a, a theistic belief in general that um, nature herself right? Uh, just the, the very fact of the majesty of nature. From nature alone, we should be able to infer that there was a God that created all of this, right? So let me just quote for you some classic statements of this, of this sentiment, right? This is from a hymn by Joseph Addison. All the stars that round her burn, and all the planets in their turn, in reason's ear they all rejoice, and utter forth a glorious voice, forever singing as they shine, the hand that made us is divine. Ah. You know, atheism is going to get nowhere until it gets better poetry, man. This is pretty good. Okay, but my favorite statement of this is from uh, the, the Westminster Confession. All right? So, um, you know, say what you will about the Calvinists, but at least they have the, the intellectual cones to really follow the logical implications of their beliefs out to the, to the bitter ends. Okay? I love this. Okay, so, so let's, let's see, what, see what the Calvinists have to say about this. Although the light of nature and the works of creation and providence do so far manifest the goodness, wisdom, and power of God as to leave men unexcusable, yet they are not sufficient to give that knowledge of God and of his will which is necessary unto salvation. <laughs> I, I love it. Uh, Calvinism is actually my, my, my very favorite brand of Christianity. Um, so basically what the Westminster Confession here is saying is that, yes, okay, nature gives us enough information that we can infer that there is a God. Moreover, it gives us enough information to know that this, you know, we should be doing something for this God, but it doesn't give us enough information to know what we should be doing. <laughs> so it gives us just enough information that we're unexcusable, <laughs> but it doesn't really give us enough information to uh, say what we should, what we should be doing. I, I love it. Okay, I'm not pillaring this position here. Okay, this is a... Uh, I mean, if you think about it one way, it's like, you know, if, if it's really true that the, the, that you can infer the, the presence of God or the existence of God just from nature alone, okay, this really does leave you inexcusable, okay? You should have known better, right? But, of course, you know, it doesn't really tell you what you should do, okay? So, <laughs> any rate. Well, you know, so what exactly is this sign, though? So, it's one thing saying that nature says there's a God which created it, you know, you know, this nice poem, you know, the hand that made us is divine, uh, you know. But it's another thing saying precisely what it is. Okay, what exactly is it in nature that's supposed to give us this information that there was a God that, that created all of this, right? So Dembski's book at least has the virtue of giving us an answer. It doesn't give us these bromides, you know, forever singing as they shine, blah, 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 right? I mean, it, it tries to give us a, a real answer for that, and uh, that is appreciated, at least. We should appreciate it to, to that degree. So our first candidate that we're going to try on for size here is, you know, low probability as a mark of a maker. So here's the point of departure, okay? Suppose you see 10 pennies on the table. All of them are heads, all right? So what do you think the most likely explanation for this is, okay? Explanation number A, they were just randomly thrown about, and explanation number B, intelligent design. Somebody turned them all heads up. Well, you'd say, well, if they were just flung on the table there, it'd be pretty pretty unlikely for all of them to land up heads, all right? Seems like it'd be very likely for at least one of them to, to turn up tails. Well, how do we calculate this kind of stuff, all right? So flipping coins, it's easy, easy, easy to calculate the probability associated with flipping coins, all right? Now... In this series, we'll always assume that our coins are fair, our dice are loaded, all this kind of stuff, right? The probability of getting heads if you flip a coin is just one half, okay? Everybody knows this, right? So what about uh, 10 coins or, or repeated trials, coins in a row here? Suppose we flip a coin twice in a row. What's the probability of getting heads twice in a row? Well, what are the possible outcomes here? Okay, there's four possible outcomes. We get two tails, we get heads and tails, or we get two heads. Each one of these possibilities is equally as likely, so therefore the probability is one form. Now this seems to be a kind of a clumsy way of calculating it. So is there an easier way to calculate this? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, these probabilities are independent of each other. So the probability of getting two heads in a row is just 
the, the probability of, uh, you know, getting heads on the first trial times the probability of getting heads on the second trial. So it's one half times one half. So if you, if you uh, want to know the probability of getting heads, you know, 100 times in a row, it's just one half multiplied by itself 100 times. Okay? Very, very easy. Super easy to calculate this kind of stuff, right? So, um, so now let's go back to our intelligent design scenario here, okay? So we might say something like, well, it's very unlikely to randomly throw pen 10 pennies down on the table and have them all come up heads, right? So here's our first candidate for uh, the mark of the maker, for the mark of intelligent design. If something has a very, very low probability of happening, then it was intelligently designed, okay? If it has a high probability of happening, well, then it just, just happened by chance, okay? So how do you think this would fare as a mark of the maker? Well, we will leave this to the homework, <laughs> okay? That's the question you'll be actually answering for yourself in the homework here, all right? So here's how, here's the setup, okay? So there's two tables. One table has these eight pennies on it. All the pennies are, are heads up. The other table has these pennies on it, okay? Some of them are heads, some of them are tails. They, they look like this, okay? So question number one, which sequence was likely to be done by intelligent design and which one was likely to be done by coin flips? All right. Question number two, what is the probability of generating the first sequence by random coin flips? And question number three, uh, looks like I can't count here. Question number three, what is the probability of generating the second sequence by random coin flips? All right. So it's like calculate the probability of getting all eight heads in a row by coin flips and calculate the probability of getting the second sequence uh, by coin flips. What are those two probabilities? Okay? And question number four, we're going to answer the question we, we, we pose for ourselves. Okay? So based on your answer to questions number two and number three, do you think that low probability is a good sign of intelligent design or not? Okay, now, all right, please don't post your answers to the homework in the comments or in the video response. Uh, please just send me a message with your answers to your homework problems. Send them to me directly, okay? Because I don't want people looking off of other people's papers or cheating or any of this kind of stuff, right? So um, just go ahead and send them to me. And then, uh, you know, in a couple days, what I'll do is I'll, I'll grade all your homework. I'll send it back to you. And then we'll, we'll go over the answers to this question uh, in a separate video, all right? Cheers. Now, just a reminder, it's often useful to hear things from several different viewpoints. So be sure and in parallel with this, watch the first few videos in Trondreton's series, Reasoning Under Uncertainty. It really help you out. Okay.